presentation, and then the panel will get to ask questions, and the audience can ask questions. Then we'll ask the audience to leave, and the panel will stay here and uh, say how awesome it's done. Okay, let's hear it from Mason. So, hello everyone. I'm Mason, as you've all just learned, and this is my Senior X project. Welcome. So what I originally wanted to do, because I had no idea what I originally wanted to do for my Senior X, I sat for the first quarter of the year with no idea whatsoever. And then my tech instructor recommended that I do something with tech, because that has been what I've done for four years of high school. And I was like, sure, but what do I want to do? Because I don't want to do lighting or anything like that, because it's really time consuming. And I couldn't figure anything out. And then it occurred to me, oh wait, costuming, because hey, the one aspect of tech and theater that I had no idea how to do. So I originally talked to Mary Lee, who was our costumer, to see if she would help me do something about <coughs> costuming. But she was super busy and declined me, so that was that part. So I eventually went on to other ideas, such as building a rock wall in the school, because I'm a rock climber, and there isn't one close by other than Beach Cliff, but you have to pay to get in, which isn't a lot of fun. Um, so I came back to it and decided I was going to do costuming, because I, I built cosplays before, kind of here and there, <coughs> over in the corner. And from there, decided, okay, this is what I actually want to do. And so, basically, I had done cosplays in the past, and I had been to Comic-Cons, which is super fun, highly recommend it. Uh, and so I was just deciding on what to build, because there were so many choices. So then I went on with trying to create my essential question, because that was probably the hardest part of this process. For anybody that doesn't know, you have to create a question so that you can go on with the project and say what you learned and what you're going to do. And so I spent many, many hours of conversations with my mother on what to decide to do. Because with the costuming part, I was like, OK, I could learn to sew and say how that would impact me further than life. But since I didn't do a whole lot of sewing in this, it was more or less going into designing the costume itself with no templates, I decided to say how would cosplay, or how can I create a cosplay on my own and what would it take? So that was my essential question. And from things I knew in the past, cosplay, for anybody that doesn't know, is a, word, is, the, is a mashup of the words costume and play. I had built a cosplay in the past of Pyramid Head, as I said, which is currently sitting over the corner. If anybody wants to see it at the end, I'd be more than wanting to show you. Um, the cosplays are creations of characters from books, video games, or other forms of media, and creating their outfits and stylizing <coughs> your personality to act a lot like them. I had created the mask for this project a year and a half in advance as a side project because I thought, hey, why not? My mentors were Ruth Davis and Joni Knights. Ruth owns the quilt and fabric shop in Southwest Harbor and has been sewing and making quilts for over 30 years. Joni Knights is the assistant manager and seamstress at Quilt and Fabrics and actually helped me a lot with this project. She's been working with Ruth for a few years and has been sewing and doing other stuff for over 30 years. Uh, as it appears, it appears that neither of them are here at the moment. I thought Ruth was going to be here. Um, my first meeting with Ruth was to pitch the idea of the costume and to introduce Red Helm to her, which is the character I am currently dressed as for the most part. So that went pretty well. She was excited about it because she had done <coughs> nothing like this whatsoever. And I was excited to get the project started. From there, I decided on what materials to use. Basically, I did a lot of research into the character and studied the character many, many times to figure out what I would need. And I'm going to pass these around. Keep these two together, please. <laughs> um, so basically, I went to design the character templates and study what I needed. And so I went to Martin's because that's really the only source of fabric that I knew around because I wanted stuff that wasn't just cotton because I needed more than that, such as the fake leather and I needed jersey material basically to make the shirt. And so I ran into a few problems along the line, but I will get into that later. Uh, from there I needed paint because I was going to be coloring all of this. And so I went to Home Depot because I also needed a few other smaller hardware parts for the mask. And so I talked to the people there and talked to them what I was doing, and they helped me decide on what I would need and what I might potentially use. And so from there, I went to buying a lot of spray paint and a few other small accessories. Finding information on the character was like the second hardest part aside from figuring out my question, because as far as the 
world of the internet was concerned, this character didn't exist. There were pictures from the game, but there was no information otherwise. There was no wiki or anything like that. So basically what, did I res what I ended up resourcing to was the Corpse Party forums. The game that this is from is Corpse Party Blood Drive. There's a forum about all the information from the game because it was translated from Japanese to English. And so basically, I ended up talking to a whole bunch of people in the forums to see if I could get any information from them. I ended up finding this gun guy named Matt, who actually hooked me up with the files and the assets for the entire game, which saved my butt in the long run. I spent many hours digging through the files to find the character assets and spreadsheets of images for Red Hell, which is seen here. Basically, the first part of this build that I made was the cloak. I have singled out the cloak from the spreadsheet and using pixel measurements, depending on the size of my laptop screen, blew it up in proportions so that it would fit, uh, physically fit a human being. From there, I realized that for the template, it was massive and wouldn't actually fit me as a person. So I had to size it down about four times to fit my body. And from there, I went on to creating. And as these were the size measurements that I really started with, I thought 25 and a half inches by 55 inches was enough. It was not. I had to about double that. And then finally it fit and worked. From there, I talked to Ruth, and using the material, using the cloak material, which was a gray base, we ended up finding something that would work and designed it onto the fabric. And from there, I went to sewing. This was probably the easiest part of the project sewing-wise, because after this, everything just got really complex. From there, I went on to painting the cloak multiple times and trying not to make it stick together, as the final project turned out quite nicely. From there, I went on to creating the axe which, as seen here, was actually not as bad as I thought it would be. I ended up taking the spreadsheet for the axe head and singling it out, just like I'd done with the cloak, and resized it. From there, I printed out a black and white copy, and I sketched it onto a very large board of wood so I could cut it out and create it. So this was not as much of a process I had originally thought it would be but it was still a lot of fun. From there, I cut it out. I had a sm small problem as there's a large gouge in the head. And used, after filling that in, I used a belt sander to actually create a bevel so that it has an edge. So it wasn't just a flat piece of wood. The next step in the process was creating the handle and attaching the two pieces. They were used, I used a single peg because there was no way I could have made a gouge in the board to put this onto the handle. So I used a peg and I friction fed it and then I glued it in place and have everything set under a clamp overnight. The paint job was a whole lot of fun, but a mess. I ended up priming it and then painted over it a few times with a few different types of spray paint, which I then learned were much more difficult to get off my skin than I had originally intended. <laughs> Oil based acrylic spray paint yeah. is not what you would expect. <laughs> Creating the shirt. This process was kind of interesting because so basically uh, Ruth and I had looked at the character and decided it was a medieval mashup of all sorts of things. And so she ended up finding a shirt template online that would work for us. And so I ended up putting the template together, printing it out, giving it to her, and like, cutting everything out. The problem is it's in women's, so it fits my body really weird because it's a women's large and I'm not used to that. Um, this, oh, this process it took me about two hours to complete. I had all the pieces together, and it was just a simple fact of lining them all up, taping them together, and then figuring out if everything looked correct. So in this picture, you can see Ruth and I going over the search for us, to cut everything out. And here's the final product. The problem I had with the shirt is that the two tan materials that are being passed around the first material that I picked up, which I thought would work because it looked nice and had the perfect color for it, turns out it was like a curtain lining, so it had no stretch to it whatsoever and wouldn't actually work for a shirt. So I ended up going back to Martin's and buying a jersey material. The problem was I needed tan material. They only had white. So I ended up buying a whole bunch of white material and soaking it in a five gallon bucket full of black tea overnight, <laughs> which got the quite nicely, it worked quite nicely, and I got a great color out of it. Everything just smelled like tea for about two weeks. <laughs> Um, the the uh, next thing we went on to were the gauntlets, or the arm straps, which is basically just uh, fake leather straps that are wrapped around my wrist. That wasn't hard, it took us about an hour to complete, and that was the end of that. Moving on to the next piece, which was the skirt. Yes, I made a skirt, and yes, I am wearing a skirt. It's not quite the big deal as you would expect. 
Um, there's a lot of trial and error in this because, uh, to quote Joni, because I'm a guy, I've got no hips and no thighs. Big whoop. <laughs> um, and the skirt itself was a lot of a process to create. It was a lot of trial and error, and it was very, very difficult. Um, I didn't think it could be that hard to make it, but it was quite difficult. I had a very rough time. And because I didn't really know what was going on, and Joni had to explain it to me about 10 times before I understood it. Uh, what have I learned from all of this? Well, do plenty of research before buying materials so you don't have to buy things multiple times over and over again. From there, research just teach you absolutely everything. If you can find more information than you need, that's great. It saves what you need to do in the long run. Also, take your time to not rush. Spray paint can only dry so fast. The next thing I learned is always buy more than you intend because if you screw up, you have the extra you need to fix any of your problems as I learned with the skirt as my measurements were wrong and I had to restitch the materials. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Also, acrylic spray paint takes a lot more than paint thinner to get off of skin. And this project wasn't actually that expensive. It only cost me about $50 in the long run, which was quite cheap. I thought I'd take out a grant for a few hundred dollars, but it turns out I was wrong. And a general thank you, first off, to Ms. Ferno, my senior ex-advisor, to Ruth and Joni for all of the help and support they've done for me throughout the project, my family, because uh, without them driving me back and forth, I probably would have just been stuck at home doing this on my own. Uh, for Matt, the guy that helped me and me up with all the asset files for the game, because without him, I'd probably still be stuck drawing on pieces of paper to figure out the templates. And a few people that I coordinated with on the forums to navigate through everything and find any information I would need. Next up is on sources, although it is on the hard copy printout, and that is the end. Thank you. Any questions from the panel? Yes. Have you ever used a 
say, um, let's see, a belt. What did you use? Do you used uh, a bandsaw, a belt sander? Have you used those pieces of equipment before? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Chris? Uh, watching this, I felt like you had uh, had a crash course in couture sewing, um, and you seem to have done very well with it. My question to you is, do you feel that you've learned enough techniques through this project to, to go, if you want to create another character, go out on your own and do it? And if so, would you actually do it? Uh, I would. I would okay. most definitely use this knowledge to create more costumes. It was a lot of fun, as it always is. Uh, which character I would do next, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, that probably is something I would have. So which part? Is it the shirt that you use the surgery? Uh, yes. The, I've never used a surgery. Yeah. How is it different to me than just a regular sewing uh, It's a lot scarier. Um, <laughs> basically, what a surgery does as opposed to a sewing machine, a sewing machine will just create the seams. The surgery will cut and seam everything at once. So if you basically, as you create a line, it'll cut the excess fabric off. Does it bind the edge? Yeah, it binds everything. Yeah, if you ask that, you have to show right now. That's how they so, getting back to all the things that you've learned, um, and you said, you know, as far as sewing, is there any aspect of this that you're having to do all the research that you've been doing for college or whatever you choose to do? Well, I've always done a lot of research on everything. It's just how I am as a person, and so I was very well aware that if you research for this project, I had a lot of it because I knew the character didn't really exist otherwise. So, yes. It was What made making the skirts a difficult? Uh, well, considering I'm a guy, I don't wear skirts very often, and I didn't know really what I was doing. Sorry. <laughs> because the only experience I have wearing a skirt was actually the pyramid head costume, as my mother has made me one in the past, because it is part of the costume. So this was the only actual experience with skirts that I had. But what was the hardest part of that? Um, getting it to fit on my body. Since I'm a guy, I don't have hips. There was nothing to hold it up. I had to improvise and make it very, very, very skinny. What's the other big thing doing against the podium? The other big thing that's doing against the podium is the rest of the pyramid head costume, the helmet from the past, which people in the school have seen me wear around during Halloween time, uh, and the sword, which people haven't really seen because I can't bring it into school. Um, is, uh, okay. <coughs> Do you think you'll ever, in, in your theater work, volunteer to help with costumes, or will you stick potentially? Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, I do a little bit of everything. I'd probably volunteer to help with costumes. Not that I know, this, you know what goes into it. Any other questions? All right. Well, hope to uh, thank you, Mason. We'll have to ask everybody about the panel to check out for a second.